morning and welcome to worship at Central Union Church. It is great to be able to gather with you again on this Sunday, to be able to lift our hearts in worship to God, to be able to open ourselves to the ways that the Spirit might move and speak again this morning. It is good to continue to come together as a community of faith and to offer our lives, our hearts, our minds to God in praise. As we begin today, we begin each service as the way we normally do, with messages of good news from our community. Simple things and things that are profound, some good news that's happened this week is we're continuing to try to improve and grow in our capacity, our abilities here with our online worship. And one step we've taken is we were gifted some microphones, so hopefully you hear a difference this week. If you do, let us know, uh, because we're always trying to do new things in order to help facilitate a space wherein we can worship God together. The other that I wanted to lift up is in the back of the campus, some of you might have seen this if you're connected to our children's ministry, but if you're not, there have been a, a garden that is developing near the back of the campus as the children's ministry are looking for ways to help connect with the kids in our, in our church, as well as develop a fun project that helps teach lessons of our faith. And so Keana Herrera, our Director of Children's Ministry, as well as with the help of Kristen Young, our Director of Youth Ministry, have been working on this garden. And there's videos of its development and growth. We'll have to show them to you later. But each time I see it, it's just good news of reminding me of the ways that we continue to grow in our faith even during this time. Cassie, I think you had some good news as well to share for our community this morning. Morning, everyone. Yes, uh, another piece of good news this morning is we are welcoming new council members, Carolyn Kuluhulu and Carol Egan. Um, so they are both excited to start to serve on the council at this time. And just to get to know them a little bit, we have a little video just of them introducing themselves and talking a little bit about why they are excited to be a part of the council and the life of the church at this time. I've been a part of the Centering Prayer Group at Central Union Church since almost the very beginning, since about 1999. And it's about a spiritual journey. And it has really expanded my relationship with God. Um, I didn't really know what it was when I joined it. And I would highly recommend it to anyone who's curious. I've enjoyed the church from the time I first started attending way back in, I don't know, the 80s, I think. The community ministry outreach committee I've been a part of for many years now, chairman of for several years, actually. And I just enjoy all of the things that we're able to do out in the community uh, to help uh, primarily with the homeless situation or people trying to get out of homeless situation. Um, and also with the women's transition house and just all of the needs in our community. That's been very uh, important to me. And the other thing is being a part of the choir. I've enjoyed uh, being a part of Central Union's choir for many years also. And I've worked with Margaret uh, on helping with the music, and that's been very life-giving. I've always enjoyed singing. I was surprised, first of all, to, to get the call asking if I would be interested. And so I did ask a few questions, and I said I had to think about it a little bit because I knew it was a big responsibility. And I have served on other committees at the church uh, way back when in the um, Family Life Committee, and then the Adult Education Committee, and then the Interim Minister Search Committee. So I've never served on something like the council. I have a little time to be able to devote to something like this. And I am an attorney and a real estate broker and so I have some experience along the lines of the kinds of things I think the council does. So I thought, well, perhaps I have something to offer. Um, and I'm certainly willing to be a good listener as well. 
I had told Martha and Brandon and Mary when everything had to stop that I would do whatever I could to help. <laughs> so when she called, I couldn't very well say, no, I don't want to help that way. <laughs> so I said, sure, um, as long as it's just for the rest of this year, that'll be just fine. how to facilitate personal relationships within the congregation because I think these are what really keep people connected to the church and from my own experience I have enjoyed enduring friendships uh, which have involved people helping me when I needed it and my helping those people when they needed it and it really has been wonderful uh, and as I say, they're enduring relationships. You know, it's, they've gone on for a long time. What relationships will we need to strengthen in the months ahead? And even now, not just in the months ahead, but um, because we're so separated, um, we need to try to strengthen relationships through phone calls, through sending cards or notes to people, um, keeping in touch with people in the church and in our community. Friends, it is a gift to be able to add these members of our church onto our council. And if you would, I'd invite you to join with me in a spirit of prayer as we ask God's blessing upon them and upon our council as they lead us as a church during this time. Friends, would you join with me in a spirit of prayer? Eternal and holy God, you have called Carol and Carolyn to serve among us, to serve Central Union Church, and to share their blessings in such a way that it touches our lives and ripples out into the community. May your Holy Spirit continue to rest upon them. May it continue to give them wisdom and guidance. May they continue to share in the ways that they follow you. Help them to be diligent in their duties, that your church might continue to grow and deepen in faith and in love. We thank you for the ways that you have blessed us with members such as this and all of those who have said yes to serving your church. It's in the precious and powerful name of Christ we pray. Amen. And friends, it is not just the members of our council, it is all of us together. For in our congregational model, each of us is called upon to listen for the lead of the Holy Spirit, to respond to the call of Christ, and to help one another along this way of faith. In honor of that, let us sing, let us continue our worship with this hymn of Help Us to Love One Another. As in our daily life we struggle 
Today, we will reflect on two passages of scripture. The first is from the beginning of Acts and describes the way that the followers of Jesus practiced their faith together after Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came upon them. In this passage, we learn about how these followers of Christ be, became what many consider to be the first church. This group of believers gathered together in Jerusalem from all over the world and together as a diverse body practiced their faith beautifully together in unity. The second passage this morning is from Philippians and is what many scholars consider to be the lead in an ancient hymn of faith. This song in Philippians has become widely known to define what humility is from a Christian perspective laying out how to act humbly as modeled by Christ. So now we will hear these scriptures read by McKenna. A reading from Acts chapter two, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. A reading from Philippians chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. Friends, would you join with me in a spirit of prayer? Holy God, we thank you for the reading of your word. We thank you for the way it comes alive. May it come alive in our hearts. May it stir within us in order that it might come alive through our actions, through the ways that we interact, the ways that we speak, and the ways that we move throughout this world. May your written word come alive in us today. It's in your precious and powerful name we pray. Amen. Friends, I'm sure that perhaps, like myself, you have a go-to mask. One that you leave perhaps in the car or by the front door or the entrance to the garage. Somewhere in your place where you won't forget it. And perhaps like me, you've garnered a bit of a collection of masks. Most of mine are thankfully created by my wife. She's done a wonderful job. This is one of my favorites right here. And I keep them pretty much all over the house. There's one in the car. There's one by the door to the garage. There's one here at the office. I, I keep them wherever I can because I'm always nervous that I'm going to leave without one or that I'll forget it somehow. My most recent addition uh, comes from our preschool. I don't know if you can see this, but this one has the logo of this preschool on it. Pretty, pretty fancy. And I don't know about you, but I've noticed they've been getting even fancier. I mean, there's ones that match outfits, so people are coordinating. I've even seen some designer masks. Now, the most expensive mask I've heard about recently is being valued at about one and a half million dollars. The creator of this mask says it's made out of 18 karat white gold, and it's to be decorated with over 3,000 diamonds. The Creator of this mask says it weighs a little over a half a pound. So, you know, it's not very practical. And to me, this, this story of this mask illustrates that the face masks have become much more than a tool for public health. They've become a symbol. And in our, in our country, sometimes a symbol of our division. Let me tell you about a story I read. At the start of the pandemic, a 40-something mother of two named Amy was fearful. She paid close attention to the guidelines from local officials about what she needed to do to protect herself and her family. And when she'd heard about the recommendation to wear a mask, well, she was all for it. 
like many across the country, perhaps like you, she made masks for herself and for her family. And out of concern for others, she continued to make masks for her neighbors and friends. She was worried that the pandemic would take a really bad turn. However, after some time had passed, when her governor announced that the statewide lockdown would continue for yet another month, she couldn't take it anymore. Pandemic or not, she felt done. Something switched inside of her. And Amy began to doubt whether the coronavirus was really that big of a deal. Her posts on social media revealed more of her frustration, her anger, and her new anti-mask stance. And while she still carries a mask with her, she says, it's a violation of my freedom, and I just don't think they work. Now, Amy knows her position is unpopular, and she indicates that people verbally attack her when she shares her view. Now, over 700 miles away from Amy lives Scott. And Scott, like Amy, was skeptical about masks and felt as though it might be some form of government control. He had read an article about how men are more, or excuse me, men are less likely to wear masks. Researchers have found that while men are at a higher risk of dying from infection than women, men are more likely to opt out of donning a mask. The article promotes wearing masks for the good of public health. And while Scott disagreed with it as he read it, he felt like the article wasn't trying to shame him into compliance. In fact, the article's author concludes her message by saying, trying to shame people into wearing masks will only cement their resistance. Empathy has its own kind of power. And because of her tone, Scott reached out to the author, an epidemiologist. And Scott said that he felt like she showed him compassion during their conversation, and didn't condemn him. This woman, who had spent years of her life studying the subject, approached him with humility. And in the end, he says the conversation with her changed his mind. He still doesn't like wearing the mask, but when he's inside a store or in a crowded area, he gets it. Scott says he realizes it's not just about himself. It's about the worker at the grocery store who doesn't have a choice or about the person next to him in line whose home situation he knows nothing about. You see, being shown compassion helped him to be compassionate. Scott said, it opened my eyes to being more sensitive. Now, as my collection of masks implies, I am wholeheartedly on board with masks as a means to keep my family, my community, my church safe and healthy. However, for me, these stories of Amy and Scott, they ultimately aren't about masks. They're about something deeper. They highlight a truth that will continue to be relevant long after a vaccine is found and made widely available, and that $1.5 million mask is broken down for parts. It's a truth that the Apostle Paul articulated so well when he wrote, If there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, then be of the same mind, having the same love. Let each of you look not to your own interests but to the interests of others. Now, let's break this down a bit. When Paul writes, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation from love, if there is any sharing in the Spirit, that if can be a bit misleading. You see, the idea is not that there may or may not be encouragement in Christ. No, the word that's translated as if well, it can and perhaps should be translated as since or in view of the fact. Since there is encouragement in Christ, in light of the fact that there is consolation from love. You see, Paul is not articulating a possibility. He's naming a reality. He's saying to that church, this is who you are. You are a people of compassion and sympathy. You are a people blessed with the Holy Spirit. You are a people who know firsthand the encouragement and comfort of love. 
because this is who you are, be yourselves. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand because that's who you are. Now, this guidance, it was there for a reason. You see, the, the body of Christ in Philippi was beginning to feel stress fractures. Near the end of the letter, Paul calls out by name two members of that church for causing division. Keep in mind that when these letters were first received in that first century, in that early church, they would have been taken before the whole congregation and read aloud. It must have been awkward. Now, it would be amazing if we could say that the Philippian church was the only one to ever experience divisiveness and strife. But we know that's just not true. In fact, most of the letters that Paul wrote address some sort of painful division within the church. I mean, since the earliest days of the church, disunity and combativeness within the body of Christ have been as prevalent as the common cold. So how do we guard our hearts and our minds from such a sickness? How do we keep our church, our, our households, from being pulled apart, particularly in this time when we're all just trying to figure out the best way forward? I mean, let's be frank. Each of us have different preferences or priorities, different pieces of the puzzle. And even with the best of intentions, we're bound to bump into each other and step on toes. So when the Holy Spirit implores us, be of the same mind, have the same love, it doesn't mean that everyone has to have the same opinion. It means having the same mindset. We might not all stand in the same place, but we can all face the same direction. We can all look to Christ with humble hearts. And if we are moving towards Christ, then we are inevitably moving closer to each other. My hunch is that if you've ever tried to resolve a conflict, if you've ever experienced even a modicum of reconciliation, then you know about that moment, that moment when your heart turns. It's the moment when you begin to think about the other person's perspective. It's the moment when the Holy Spirit calls on you to focus on a picture that's, that's bigger than all of the reasons for why you're right. It's the moment when you see that there might be something more for you to learn, that there's room for you to grow, and that there's more to grace than you previously thought. Now, that moment doesn't mean that everyone's in agreement. We may still have differences, and we may not be ready to move from our position. But that moment changes the posture of our spirit. It opens us up and protects our hearts from the arrogance that isolates us. We are living in a time of separation, a time when we are stressed out. And in our stress, we're apt to say things we don't mean, or perhaps just as tragic, we feel things we don't say. We don't give space to articulate those things deep within our hearts, those meanings that we hold, things as simple as, I appreciate you. I wish I had done that differently. I'm trying my best, but I'm worried. Or your encouragement means the world to me. Deep truths that we often don't articulate because perhaps we think the other person already knows them. Or perhaps we're unsure of the right words or we think it's not the right time. But now is the time to give voice to those deep truths. Now is the time, because in this time of separation, it's too easy to keep drifting apart. It's way too easy for our differences to become divisions. So how do we be of the same mind? How do we have the same love? Well, the early church gives us a guide. In Acts 2, beautifully read by McKenna, it gives us a description of the early church, and that description is just about every pastor's fantasy. I mean, it's our, it's our unicorn dream. Eating, talking theology, helping people, glad and sincere hearts, more eating, praying, and more people coming every day. 
what's not to love about that? But it's important to keep in mind that this kingdom vision of everyone together, sharing, united, this, this vision isn't built upon a shared political outlook. They weren't held, held together by the same socioeconomic bubble. They came from all kinds of cultures and backgrounds. And I'm sure they had different opinions about music and food, clothing and customs. But what kept them devoted to one another wasn't uniformity. It was the Trinity. The Holy Spirit held them together by some very specific practices. I mean, when it says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, it doesn't just mean that they all gathered together and listened to lectures all day. It means they supported one another as they committed to applying the gospel in their lives to see faith become flesh among them. Through prayer and worship, they found the strength to let go of something that they valued in order to care and meet the needs of another. And that repetition of breaking bread, it comes up a couple of times. That's, just not, that's not just about being hungry. That's an expression of their commitment to staying in relationship because Christ calls us all to the table. God's love is big enough to hold us together. And I'm convinced that the Holy Spirit is revealed in the tension between our differences and that the strength of our relationship is not found in how much we have in common, but in the uncommon, extraordinary faithfulness of Christ. Because of Christ, the church is unlike any other community. I mean, what other place can hold together a people of diverse generations and gender expressions, genealogies, not to mention tastes in music? I mean, for being honest, that's a big deal in the church. And we're going to have differences. But the question is, what do we do with those? Do we push our own agenda, rally supporters to our cause in the hopes of winning our position? Or do we shift our posture and choose a posture of patience over presumptuousness? A posture of seeking to understand over condemnation, of reconciliation over rivalry, of equality over privilege. When we shift our posture, we reflect the image of God. And what's more, we begin to see the face of God in others. The diversity of the church, it's not an easy thing. It's hard to listen to another's experience when it challenges the assumptions of our own experience. And seeking the interests of others, well, that generally takes more work than seeking our own interests. It's not easy. But that's what the church has done. That's what you, as the body of Christ, have done. And that's why from the very beginning, the world has been astounded by what God has done in and through the church. When we come together, it's not to convince others of our perspective or to persuade other people to be, think like us. We come together to point each other to Christ. We come so that others would help point us to Christ. Glory be to God. Amen. Send
so much for sharing that new song with us, Wade. Friends, welcome to the communion table. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. And our scriptures tell us that people will come from the north and the south and the east and the west all to gather around this table. We come here from different backgrounds and different families, different cultures and histories. And while our stories may be different, each time that we gather around this communion table, we proclaim to the world and to one another that we choose unity. Here at this table, we celebrate that we are one. We are the body of Christ. I'm filled with joy that all of you are here because this body would not be complete without you. Each and every one of us is needed here. Each of us brings a unique perspective and voice. We are uniquely gifted, and I give thanks to God for all that you are and all that you bring. My friends, you are welcome here, no matter what. Let us share together in this sacred meal so that we can find rest in God and so that our relationships can be strengthened and renewed for the work ahead. At this time, I invite you to go and get your communion elements. You can use whatever you have at home. You just need something to eat and something to drink. If you already have them, I encourage you to use this time as a time of prayer. During this song, may we each surrender to God the burdens that we are carrying. Perhaps our burdens are our pain or anger at someone, perhaps their sadness or anxiety. Whatever we are carrying, let's offer them up to God so that our hearts can be lighter and we can come together as one. Join me in this time of reflection.
on the night on which he was to be betrayed, Jesus gathered around the table with his closest friends, the disciples. And after giving thanks for the bread, he broke it. And he said, friends, take this and eat it, all of you. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after pouring it, and blessing it, he passed it around and said, friends, drink this. This is the cup of the new covenant, my life, which is poured out for you. Each time that you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. Cassie, will you offer a prayer over this sacred meal? As we go to prayer this morning, we grieve the loss of church members uh, recently lost, Leah Rowland and Helen Sato. And we remember and we celebrate their lives this morning. So please pray with me. God, thank you for all that you provide for us. Thank you for being faithful to us, our community, to Leah Rowland, to Helen Sato. Thank you for loving us and caring for us even when we do not realize it. God, as we come to the table, we remember your gift of life and the ways we are connected to one another through you. As we prepare to eat and drink of this communion meal together, we think of those who worked hard to pick the grain we are about to eat. We think of those who delivered our food safely. We think of the earth who provides the food we are about to consume. And we remember that you give us life through our connections with one another. We remember you, Jesus, who gave openly of yourself to everyone, who ate with those we might call suspicious, and who offered yourself to all, even knowing that one would betray you. And as we remember all that you give to us, we open ourselves to be vessels of love and of light. Unite us in your spirit to love and encourage those around us. God, today we commit again, or perhaps for the first time, to growing in your love and in our world. We pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is the bread of life broken for you. Let us eat.
And this is the cup of blessing poured out for each and every one of us. Let us drink together. Join me again in prayer of thanksgiving of these elements. God, thank you for inviting us all to the table to share together in this meal rich in life and liberation. Thank you for nourishing us and sustaining us during this time and for showing us how to share life selflessly. May we live our lives in openness to others as we live in gratitude to you. Amen. Church, we know the reward of God's welcome. The Holy Spirit has blown through us so that we sing of stead God's steadfast love continually. And now we are gathered here as prophets of welcome. And we have an opportunity to respond to what God has done for us. In this time of offering, we have an opportunity to give back a portion of what we have received. And we do so in the hope that through our mission and ministry, others will feel God's loving kindness and hospitality too, just as we have. There are three ways that you can give this morning. The first is through the website. You can go to our website, centraluniónchurch.org and click on Give Now. Second, you can text RISEN to the number on your screen and that will prompt you um, and lead you through a way to give there. And the final way is through mail. So you can mail a check to Central Union Church uh, at the address on your screen. Let us each give generously because the need and is great in our community, friends. Let's bless this gifts that will be received. God of increase and of bounty, you are the source of all good things. We offer you these gifts as a portion of all that you have given us. May these gifts that we now give back be as loaves and fishes for those who find themselves in need this day. We pray this in the holy name of Christ. Amen. Friends, we thank you so much for joining you in worship this day. We pray that as you go into this week, that God would bless you and be with you, that you would be upheld and loved until we come together again. And now I invite you to join me in singing Christ Beside Us. Christ beside us, Christ before us, Christ behind our hearts, Christ within us, Christ below us, Christ above us, never to part. Hello, Mary. Hi, Cassie. There's Brandon. Brandon. There you are. Can you talk? Can we hear you now? We were having a little bit of trouble. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? I can hear yeah, you now. No. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. I don't know if others could could see you or if it was just Cassie and I that could see you were having some trouble struggles with your microphone. So we'll yeah, I don't know. I mean, it said I was unmuted and, and I just thought that, you know, Mary, you wanted more screen time. And so <laughs> you were just bumping me. So, you know, that's fine. I mean, that's fine. That could have, that is just as likely to happen, but that's not what happened this time. <laughs> I mean, you could just. We'll have to figure out quite just what happened so we can fix it for next week. Where's, where, where am I on your screen, Mary? Oh, sorry. I had us in speaker view, so it must've been bouncing around to people. Now you're in gallery view. So you're next to me. I'm in the middle. Cassie's uh -huh. to my left and then you're to my right. So you could have just, you could have, maybe you could have just pushed me off. Where am I? Where are you at, Cass? Oh, like that? Like, oh. Right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, I'm sitting. Well, I see John Jacobson's mentioning the volume. So as I 
as I said, we, we had some gifts, which are wonderful, of microphones. Mine is pretty visible. Cassie and Mary have done a wonderful job hiding theirs. So look at that. And I lost my windscreen somehow. So maybe that's the issue. I, I don't know well, what happened. I can hear you now, though. So um, in terms of where I'm at with the camera, um, it shouldn't matter because this is hardwired into the system. So I could, theoretically, I should be able to go over here and you hear me just the same as when I am. Thank right you here. for giving us that beautiful view of the Christmas tree too. <laughs> <laughs> My a little pleasure. early to start decorating. Isn't it? I know, I know. We just want to get a jump on things. Right, uh, I, right. We need a few more. It's, it's great to have the love never faileth. And this is the only picture I have currently of the sanctuary where you can see that. So ah. I got to get a new picture. Well, I'm just going to step we... outside. Oh, Wait. good, good. It's lovely yeah. outside. It's nice to be outside. Uh, okay, I can screen share our announcements. Give me one second. Oh, maybe. Oh, uh, well, before, as you're doing oh, that, uh, one other way of giving is the give aloha, which I know we still have a few more weeks to go, but I, you, if you get the e-blast, you already noticed that that notice, notice is going out with, a, with the church's number, with the give aloha program with Foodland. It's been a wonderful way that um, people have contributed to the church in the past. Mm -hmm. I can look up the number later and put it in the comments section. Or like I said, it's in the e-blast. And if you're not getting the e-blast, please give us your email so we can make sure that that goes to you. Yes. And we'll have it um, when Give Aloha starts, we'll have it on our Give Now screen. We'll, we'll show that every week so that people can see and remember yeah, our we, number. We got time. It's got yeah. like two weeks, two weeks or so. Two okay. weeks, yeah. Okay, great. Let me see if I can get our announcements shared. Mm, there we go. Can you see them? I can. That's a wonderful yes. picture that I think, I think Gavin took that picture, right? That's the spire cover there. I think it is. Yeah, it's nice. I like to imagine Gavin lying on the ground, looking up, <laughs> taking that picture. I think that's what happened. <laughs> Probably. Probably. Or maybe Emma took that. Do you think, do you think his Ooh. daughter took that picture? I that would be cool. think it's possible. I think it's possible. I feel like, I don't know. Did, would she have had like the big camera or like the, the phone? Maybe just the phone. Yeah, then maybe. All right, so we have lots coming up today. Um, Brandon, do you want to start us? Uh, yes, I would love to do that. Uh, and what I'm going to start with actually isn't on our list. Uh, oh, today good. is the 91st birthday of Barbara Ching, uh, otherwise affectionately known as Popo, uh, the mother of Diane Ching, mother-in-law of uh, Doc Drew. And so we want to give Barbara Ching a, a warm, happy birthday. And maybe at the end we can sing happy birthday because that's just, it's so beautiful when we you sing. Know, I feel like every time we try it, it's going to get better and better. Oh. So we might as well give it a shot. Shall we do that now or shall we do the other announcements first? Let's just do it now. Let's just do it. Okay. Uh, I see that. Okay. You started. Oh, you know, oh, you know what? Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Um, let's give people a chance because maybe there's other birthdays. And yeah. if you remember right, last time we sang happy birthday, some people then later mentioned that it was theirs as well. So why don't we give people a chance to add if, if it's their birthday or they have a loved one they want us to sing to. We're just taking requests basically right now. If there's a song you want to hear Mary sing, whatever it might be. Um, but really, if there's another birthday uh, that you'd like to have us include, why don't you put that in? So we'll do our announcements and then we'll swing back. Okay, sing, good. In case others good. That'll give us like, it's like a long drum roll leading up to it as we do the other announcements. That's perfect. Okay, great. Well, we have um, starting just very shortly, there's the youth gathering and also Sunday school. So if you need information about how to get your cakey or your youth into those gatherings, you can email um, me at mary-herbig at Central Union Church or Brandon at brandon-duran at centralunionchurch.org. Um, and then co coming up, we have the Cujillo School Supply Drive. So if you have questions about that, if you want to learn how you can bless one of our neighborhood schools, you can reach out to Kristen Young, um, our youth director, and her email is there on the screen. I'll do one more because it's, it's very sad and also exciting. Um, but next week, it's already been 10 weeks. And so Cassie's final Sunday with us is next week. 
Cassie, it's been such a blessing to have you here with us, and we are really looking forward to celebrating you and celebrating with you next week. Um, but everyone can get excited because next Sunday, Cassie will be preaching our sermon. And so um, I think that's going to be just such a great gift to our church. And thank you again for all for adding your voice this summer and for all that you've given and done for us. Um, I can jump. Uh, the next one is the drive through blessing is also happening next week. So even though we won't be having a Vesper service anymore, we will still be having a um, drive through blessing of backpacks it's a double blessing isn't it we're doing a blessing, drive through back back was that mary i said get a blessing and give a blessing get a blessing and give a blessing yeah so drive through and um have your backpack blessed and also you can come and uh bring things for family promise as well and that is at 5 30 right it's it's just at 5.30 or is it still? Yeah, there? sorry, that's my mistake. I meant to take six off. It's from 5.30 until 6.30. So you can come anytime in those hours and we'll send out some more instructions on exactly what to do in the e-blast. And we'll, we'll share more next Sunday as well. And then finally, there is an opportunity to help uh, deliver groceries with the Department of Health. There, there is uh, um, uh, some efforts being put together uh, by some friends of Martha Balkan, our council chair, to help deliver groceries to those in need. Uh, and if you would like to be able to, to help out with this, if you have the ability to help coordinate or, or deliver groceries, no contact is, is a part of it. It's, it's a pretty simple uh, drop off and way to bless others. Then you can email either uh, one of the pastoral team or if you know Martha's email directly, you can contact her or we can help you uh, get in touch with her so that way you can be a part of this ongoing effort um, to continue to help others who might not be able to leave their homes right now and, and are looking for some of those valuable and necessary supplies. So that's another way that you can help. And there's another help is on the way gathering later in September on September 13th. So this is different than that, although it's a similar, um, similar program to help those who need uh, food and supplies and aren't able to leave their homes at this time. So I think that covers all of our- Yeah, we had a question from John about what the needs are for Family Promise. And I've just been searching through my email. And of course, now that I need to find it, I can't seem to find it. But there's kind of a long list, John. And so we will um, be sure that that gets shared in the e-blast. And um, that way that you, you can see there and we'll share next week, we'll be prepared. It'll, there'll be a list here on this um, announcement page next Sunday for you. Yep. Or you can contact, uh, I think it's Carolyn Kuluhulu as well. I think she knows the, has the list. I'll look as well in my, in my inbox to see if I can't find it, John, before we go. Um, I, I've got the list right in front of me. If you'd like me to read it to you real quick. Who is that? Is that That's the voice Gavin. Oh, that's a, a voice from beyond. <laughs> oh, that, Hello. that added some extra spice to our morning. Sure. Yes, so Gavin, I, could you read the list? That would be great. Yes, yes. Um, cleaning supplies such as disinfectant wipes. I know those are like gold right now, but uh, those could definitely be used. Um, paper towels, toilet paper, laundry soap, gift cards for uh, Longs, Walmart, Target, Ross, gas stations, or grocery stores. So that that is the list that is it currently in the e-blast right now. Great. Thank you. And people You're can welcome. find old uh, or previous uh, e-blasts on the website, right, Gavin? Correct. At the top of the uh, website, you'll see the e-blast link. And yeah, it's there. Great. Perfect. Sounds good. Well, it looks like people have taken us up on the offer and we have a few more names to add to our, to our, to our song. Oh, good. So let's see. So let's put the names in order here. We got so we're gonna... Carl, Carl Mudrick, Ellie's husband, as well as Nancy Tudor. So, so, we got Nancy, so Carl, Nancy. Barbara. Barbara. We have Bill. 
I think it is it Bill's Bill's father. Oh, Bill's father. All right. Daniel. Daniel. Okay. There we go. Good. So Barbara, Carl, Daniel. Oh, I put them Nancy. in Carl, Nancy, oh, Barbara, it. Daniel. Why? why? That's, That's the a, order you said them the first time. I'm going to say I'm in another order. So I know, just, me too. I'm going alphabetical. Freestyle. Me. We'll just freestyle it. <laughs> All right. Should we, should we sing? Yeah, yeah Cassie, Cassie, you, lead you do have to lead us off. Have to, last time it really turned into a funeral dirge and we can <laughs> have that happening. We got to yeah. keep the pace up. <laughs> well, new microphones. This is the time. This is it. <laughs> All right. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear, dear Barbara, Carl, Daniel, Daniel, and Nancy. Daniel. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Nice. Very good. Very good. Better every time. It's every amazing. time. You're welcome for that ad added gift there. I hope all of you have a wonderful birthday with loved ones and friends. Um, yeah. Is there anything you, else we need to share? I don't think so. I think that's everything. Did you both do them alphabetical? Martha just told me that. So I did it differently. I thought you were both doing it differently. I read it. No, I read it down, but you wrote down. Oh, oh you so read it. Brandon you was had, different. So wait, oh, good. I was the different one. That's correct. You two were the same. Yeah, but yeah, maybe because correct. it was delayed, we might have sang it at the same time. We'll have to we'll look again and see. It's just a beautiful tapestry. That's what it right. was. Exactly. A beautiful right. exactly. tapestry woven together. That's right. Great. Well, I, I've heard the church bells. They've rung. It's 11 o'clock. So that means our children's program, youth program is starting. And yeah, uh, we should put some of those videos of the children's program garden that they're building. Kiana has been uh, sharing the progress that's being made. Um, and so it's something you definitely should check out if you haven't seen it yet. I think she's posting them on YouTube. Um, so maybe we can include links to that uh, and, and the next e-blast or on our Facebook page or somewhere. It's been so fun to walk by that garden. Yeah. And see totally. kind of it like, cause it was such a mess before and now it's like very well spaced out. It's, I'm looking forward to watching it grow. Mm -hmm. Me too. Great. Well, well I friends, guess that's all. We'll see you soon. Oh, I had one question real quick. Uh, yeah. Can I can I ask this last question? So Is I'm it also about my trying, best. No, not about your wonderful stole, Mary. Um, but it is a pre technical thing. Uh, so today I tried something different of of one sitting a little further back because some folks had mentioned I was getting too close <laughs> and they didn't need to see all my pores. So. If there's any feedback to that, I'm open to it. The other is I tried a light this time. So let's see, can you tell a difference between this and that? Yes. The light is better. The light is better? Yeah, yeah I also alive have a different now. light on me this time so that my eyes don't look dead. Anymore. Can you Can you turn it on and off? I wanna see the difference. Okay, yeah, okay, hang on. So here's, here it's on. And now it's off. It's true. There was a sparkle before in your eyes. And now my eyes are dead again. <laughs> <laughs> that, that might be a bit of a stretch, but, but yeah, there was a yeah. sparkle before. Good. Excellent. All right. Well, I'll leave it on for next week. Thank you to um, Dennis who gifted that to the church. All right, friends. It's that probably time for us to go. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye.